Hey everybody, it's Sue Brooke. How are you doing? So today I wanted to talk about how you make a decision. Do you have a special thing, a special system, a list, a checklist? Um, just how do you make a decision? I'm talking like a big decision. Okay, if you really need to make a big decision about something, whether it's if you're going to go get a new job or you're going to move to a different place or you're going to get married, I don't know, any kind of major decision. How, what do you do to make a decision? I would absolutely love to know how you decide to do something. So I, st I thought, well, you know, I'm in the process of kind of making a, a big decision. So I went online and I found uh, it's a wiki thing, Wikipedia, WikiHow. I just thought this would be kind of fun. So I'm going to read some of these that I found on how to make a decision. And I would really love it if you would put your ideas on how you make your decisions. So there's quite a few here, but there's some pretty good ones. So I'm going to read them on my computer behind me. So the first one, it says to understand the source of your fear, fear in making the decision, I think, or fear in jumping into something new okay so it's like what one of the things they say is to write about your fears so journal write about your fears it might help you to start understanding what your fears are when it's related to a big decision that you have to make so oh here it says an idea um, for example you start your journal by asking yourself what is the decision that I need to make and what am I afraid might happen if I make the wrong choice so that's a big one. You know, when we have to make a big decision, we start thinking, well, what if I make the wrong choice? You know, then this is going to happen and this is going to happen. And chances are you're going to talk yourself out of it. So you need to write about your fears. That's the first thing it says. So the next one says to identify the worst case scenario. That's a good one because when you really start thinking about it, you have a big decision to make and you think, oh, I'm kind of scared because this might happen, this might happen, this might happen. But think, start writing down, well, what is the absolute worst thing that could happen if I decide to do this, whatever it is, make this decision that I have to make? Really write it down. Think about the worst case scenario. Most of the time, the worst case scenario isn't really so bad. Okay, so I thought that was a good one. Number three, this one says, consider whether decision. Oh, consider whether the decision you make will be permanent. Is it going to be permanent? So here's here's an example that says, once you've thought about everything that could go wrong, think about whether the decision is reversible. So think of the worst thing case thing that could happen, all of your fears in making the decision, and then decide, well, is it going to be permanent? If something really bad does happen, then is it permanent? Is it something that's going to stay that way? So um, here's another one. Talk to a friend or a family member. Um, that one's pretty good too. Uh, one of the other things it says in there, and this is what I had already thought of, is it's always good to talk to maybe a friend or a family member. However, there could be an issue with that, right? Because a lot of times your friends or family members, they don't, they're going to, they're going to think that they know what's best for you because they know you really well. So I think it's probably even a little bit better idea to maybe even talk to someone that's completely out of the situation or that doesn't know you very well to give you a, a more wider perspective on the decision. Okay, so let's see. The next one says cons about considering the decision. When you're considering it, this one says to stay calm, you know, because if it's a big decision, you might have a lot of emotions attached to it. So you need to take a deep breath and relax and really, really make a rational decision. Because a lot of times, and I know I'm this kind of person, I tend to make decisions right away like oh my gosh I have to make the decision right now and I don't take the time to just uh, take a deep breath and think okay let's really really consider this and see you know what I should be doing all right another one says and those of you that are just joining me I'm actually 
finding some really cool ideas on how to make a big decision. So I'm in the process of making a, a decision of my own, so I thought this would be a really good topic. So here I go, this is the next part. Uh, those of you who are just joining us, go back and watch from the beginning, there's some good stuff in there. So here's the other one and I'm reading it off of my computer. Hey Cynthia, okay, get as much information as possible. When you're making a decision, a lot of times, you know, whatever the decision is, you might just take it from face value and jump into the, you know, whatever your answer is for the decision you're making. But you really need to get as much information as possible. So when you have enough information to make an informed decision, it gets a little bit easier too and you're more apt to make the decision that's going to be right for you. So um, let's see the next one. Okay, this is interesting. Use the five whys technique to understand the problem. And what they mean by that, and I read this before, think of five why questions that are attached to that decision in some way. So th let me give you an example of what they said in the, um, this website that I found. It's an example of asking yourself why five times. Oh, asking yourself why five times so to help uncover the source the source of a problem and i've heard this before this actually taps into your subconscious if you keep asking yourself why why do i need to make this decision or why why should i make this particular um, decision ask yourself that five times it says so it gives you a chance to dig deep into your subconscious and maybe get some answers that you wouldn't be thinking about that's on the surface um, next one, think about who's affected, okay? If, um, if you have a family or other people or coworkers or friends or family or whatever, who else is affected by the decision? You know, consider how your decision affects other people. So that's important too. However, you really, the most important person, obviously, to consider is you. So a lot of times I'll make decisions because I think I want to make someone else happy or it's going to benefit someone else and I'm thinking more about the other person than I am on how the decision might affect me. So you got to be very careful and really think about who is affected and then really take a look at, at yourself and, and remember that it's really you that it's affecting the most, right? Um, number five on this one. There's different parts. Okay. List all of your options. Okay. I think everybody pretty much does this, but again, on when you're asking yourself the five whys, when you are listing all of your options, keep asking yourself, okay, what's another one? What's another one? If you think that you've already answered and you've listed all your options, there's probably more you really haven't thought of. And that's another way to dig into your subconscious too, is to get some answers there. So there might look like there's only one answer to your problem, right? One or two, but really, really dig deep and see if you can list all of the options. And that might help you in making your decision as well. Another one, and again, I'm reading this from the computer behind my screen here. Make a spreadsheet to weigh the potential benefits and losses of your decision. So if it, especially if it has to do with money. So if you're dealing with, let's say someone wants to go get a new job or they want to start a new business or they're going to move somewhere and it's going to cost a certain amount of money, you really want to see what, um, on a spreadsheet, you know, monetarily, what, what that's, it's going to do for you as far as financially. So it says on this thing here that I'm reading, um, make a spreadsheet to guide your decision in the dis decision making process. Create a column for each possible choice that you're considering. And in each column, make two subcolumns to compare the benefits and losses of each possible outcome. So it doesn't necessarily have to be financially, but it could be just the almost like pros and cons, like you think about. You write all of your pros on one side, all of the potential benef certain benefits on one column, and then um, the opposite on the other side. All right, again, if you're just joining us, we're just going through, I'm going through a list of different ways to make decisions. So I'm going through a decision-making process, and I thought this would be kind of fun. So the next one is let the space between thoughts to arise. Okay, so this is what this, this, is what this one says. Creative people might not know it, but their ideas, decisions, and solution comes at times when they're not thinking or they're thinking slowly. So really, um, really, like I said before, take a deep breath and really let, the, let your thoughts 
bring out the different pros and cons and ideas and, and options that you may have never thought of before. Another one says to learn to distinguish between an impulse and an intelligent decision. Okay, this is probably my biggest problem. <laughs> I make a lot of impulse decisions sometimes, but the, or I'll sit and just keep talk, trying to talk myself out of it. So make sure you decide to make a determine if it's an impulse decision or an intelligent decision. So it usually involves taking some time to really look at whatever decision that you want to make and um, decide. You know, sometimes it's better to make a quick decision rather than thinking about it. And then you end up talking yourself out of it, right? <laughs> Thank you, Fran. Uh, I'm such a pro. Yeah, right. I'm getting this off the internet. Okay. Next one, the part three is making the decision. I like this next one. I really like this next one because I, I tell a couple of my friends, I've told people this before. This is like in a lot of different things, okay? Advise yourself as if you were a friend. So I'll ask a friend of mine a lot of times, she'll go, oh, you know, I don't know what to do, blah, 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 blah. And I'll say, well, what would you tell if you were the coach, your own coach, your own uh, mentor, your own friend? Put, take yourself out of your body, put yourself in front of yourself, and what would you say to that person? So pretend that you are um, advising somebody else on the decision and take a look at it as if you were looking through someone else's eyes. And the best way to do that is to, just to sit down and then maybe slowly pull yourself up out of your body and then go in front of you and look back at yourself and talk to yourself as if you're talking to a friend. And you know what? Sometimes it's a completely different perspective and you might actually get a totally other perspective that you wouldn't have if you wouldn't have done, uh, have tried that little trick. I like that trick. I do that sometimes with anything that I'm doing. <laughs> okay, here's another one. I like this one too. Play devil's advocate. So maybe you think, okay, I'm going to make this decision. Now let's play the devil's advocate and really think, you know, what can go wrong? What, what could go right? Um, you know, twist it around a little bit and take a look at it from another perspective. So, um, like here's what it says on here, play devil's advocate, try to argue against every good point or a good reason that you come up with. Try to go back and argue with that and see if, if it makes sense or if you need to make a different choice. Um, we also have consider whether, oh, <laughs> consider whether you're feeling guilty. Okay, making a decision out of guilt is really common. And so it says guilt is not a helpful motivator and it's not a healthy decision. So be careful with your decisions and make sure that you're not making a decision out of some sort of guilt factor. Another one says think about the future. This is a good one too. You know, put, you're, in, you're in the space like right now. Right? You're in it now. It's happening now. I have to make a decision. So then, again, you can close your eyes and, and take a look. If, if you make this particular decision, pick one of them, and then look into the future and try to picture what, by making that decision, what your life is going to look like. That might help you too. Like, is that the kind of life I want? Is that what I want the end game to be? So take a look at it that way. That was a pretty good one too. Uh, this one's probably one of the best ones. I can't say that a couple times, but trust your instincts. Trust your gut, as some people say, right? Your instincts. You would be surprised how smart you really are. <laughs> you really need to trust your gut. And if you, something happens, oh, and this is good. This has actually just happened to me the other day, not too long ago, is a friend of mine always says, if you're having a hard time or something's going on in your life and you're not quite sure what to think about it, it's listen to your body. Listen to what your body's trying to tell you. So, oh my gosh, this is so funny that this came up. So, a few weeks ago, something happened where I had an opportunity to do something, to kind of go in another direction for a minute with um, and make a decision and what was weird and funny was I started really getting talking about it and putting it in my head that I was going to make this particular decision and it was weird I started feeling sick 
like there was something weird in my stomach. It wasn't like I was getting the flu or a cold or anything. It was a really weird feeling in my body that I was, I kept thinking, what is wrong? I don't feel right. And it kind of went on for a while until all of a sudden I went, oh my gosh, I started thinking about my friend and I went, listen to what your body's telling you. And I'm telling you, it made me think, oh my gosh, I, I was going off on this other tangent thinking I was going to do something totally different and, and off the wall, you know, totally crazy, change a whole part of my life around. And I went, you know what? I'm going to listen to my body and something is telling me that this is not the right way to go. Yes, Lillian, you really do have to tune in. And that, that I believe, very, very believe. So trust your instincts, definitely. Um, and here's another one, have a backup plan. Once you make a decision, make sure you have a backup plan. You know, it might help you feel less bothered or stressed out about it if you go, well, if I make this decision and it doesn't turn out right, what is my backup plan? What would ha what can I do next? What, what would be the fix, let's per se, if it, if it happened to be a decision that wasn't the right one? And the last one on this screen is make a choice. <laughs> no matter what decision you make, be prepared to accept responsibility for the outcome. If things don't work out, it's always better to have made a conscious decision rather than have been careless about it. So at least you say, and I'm reading this off the screen again, at least you can say that you did the best you could. Make a decision and stand by it and trust yourself. And like Lillian said, definitely trust your instinct. Yes, absolutely. It is hard when you're stressed out, especially if you're going through something, you know, money issues. Money issues is a huge, huge one because when you get in this thing with money and it's, and then you think, oh, I have to do this because I don't have the money or I, or I need, or whatever's going to happen. I need the money. So I need to go off and do this. I've heard people, oh my gosh, I have friends that, oh, I have to go get a job. I have to get this job and I have to take this job. It's going to be terrible. I'm going to hate it. They end up totally hating it. And, um, because they're stressed about money. So that is not a good reason to make a decision. Absolutely. Oh, wow, Lily, you're doing great. I should get you on here. Oh, it's not going to let me. Go for a brisk walk to snap yourself out of it or if, or if you're, you have anxiety. Absolutely. Just like it said in one of the other ones is really uh, take a deep breath. Really think about what it is and write things down. I mean, I know myself. I am very, very visual. So I need to write things down and really look at it and really picture what this decision is going to mean for my life. So definitely <laughs> very good. Heavy duty litigation. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. So I would love for you. Thank you so much for, for saying all these great ideas, Elaine. I love it. So keep it coming. If any of you guys have ideas on how you make important decisions in your life, have any tips or tricks for any of us, that would be awesome. Um, like I said, I'm right now possibly thinking of making a bigger decision in my life of something else to do. So doing that. Hey, Brian Kelly, how's your event? I'm so bummed. I didn't get to stop by, but we're talking about decision making. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for the night. I know it, it's late. I went through the day and went, holy cow, I forgot to do my Facebook live. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have a big decision you need to make and you have, you want to run it by somebody, like I said before, you can run it by a friend and you can run it by a family member. Sometimes that's a little tricky and sometimes it might be good to just run it by someone else. So Brian says, I make a lot of decisions and I make them quick. Yes. You know what? They, they do say that successful people make fast decisions in certain things. That's definitely true. There are just like big life decisions you might have to think about a little bit. So it depends on the decision, obviously, but you're absolutely right, Brian. And I wish I could be more like that too. So anyway, hope that was helpful. Hope you guys got a lot out of it and um, no replacement. For oh, I love that you said that, Lily. And she said there is no replacement for sleep. That's another thing. You know, I talk about a lot about the subconscious mind and my friend Susan, who does NLP uh, breakthrough sessions and all this sort of thing. You one thing you really would, could could do, and I'm doing tonight actually, is ask yourself questions before you go to sleep at night. Because when you ask yourself questions and ask your subconscious to help you answer those questions, 
doing it, do it that at night. Ask the questions at night before you go to sleep. And all through the night, whatever you go to sleep with, your subconscious is working on the answers to those questions. So that's a great idea too, right? <laughs> awesome. So thanks for watching, Brian. I'd love to hear from you. I'm, I hope you had a great event this weekend. Lillian, thank you so much for your added value here. So I hope you guys can go. Um, go back and watch this if you didn't. If you are making a decision in your life, there's some really good stuff. I actually found it, just so you know, I, I actually typed in how to make a decision, and it came up on WikiHow. So there's pretty good stuff. It was on WikiHow under Make-Decision. So anyway, that's just where I got all my stuff today. It is good stuff. Awesome. Okay, thanks, you guys. If there's any other topics you want to hear about another day, let me know. Um, I will be back on tomorrow. Try not to do so late. You guys have a great night. Love you all. See you soon. Bye-bye.